think it needs to be a lot of more programs like this, you know, because it's not anything for the kids to do now, you know, but hang outside or go to jail, you know, and with programs like this, it, it encouraged them and give them something to look forward to as far as like, okay, if you go to school, this can happen. You always got somebody you can come and talk to, you know, so if you don't have stuff like that, then they headed to a road of nowhere. We decided that since there's so much violence in Chicago, we wanted to connect children and allow them to use their voice and put design behind it so that they can feel inspired and that we have a way to measure their hope. Our mission is to unite, inform, and inspire. Uh, so we really aim to kind of connect the, the design community and beyond in Chicago. And this collaboration with FAIR, for me, is really all about social betterment. It's about using our platform to make the world better. Um, the community, cause, and social-based organizations can fundamentally improve the human condition. And I believe that doing this together and, and, um, and partnering in this way is a really great avenue of doing that. Orlando's Weathers, I'm 16. My name is Kiani Teeks and I am 15. Kenwan Sims, 16 years old. Kenyatta Sims and I'm 15. My name is Alante uh, Banks and I'm 16. Uh, my name is Contel DX and uh, I'm 10 years old. My name is Tonicia Diggs and I am 12 years old. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot what you said. A dancer because I love to dance, and that's the thing that I know how to do the most. A basketball player. A doctor, because I want to help people that are sick. A math teacher. Architect. A police officer. I want to be a doctor. I want to help people too. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor. So ever since I was little, I wanted to save people's lives, because I feel that everybody has good well deserves to live. Scary movies. Like what? Chucky. <laughs> I stutter, and that's the scariest thing. I don't, like, I don't like talking, but I gotta get out of it one day. When it be a lot of shooting? The violence. Like shootings? That I might lose my life one day. Doing wrong things, being, being in the um, wrong place at the wrong time. Being in the house. When I'm in the house. Being around my family. Uh, if the shooting slows down. When I'm in the house. Staying in the house. Being with my family and knowing that they're by my side. You crossing your street there, people don't like each other. They just take side, pow, pow, they just side, shoot, you know. I made it somewhere in life and not be on a corner selling drugs or dead. Violence. Get my family out the ghetto. And like I don't, I don't gotta go do nothing, do nothing stupid to get money. I go to work and earn it. It made me feel good about myself, cause like, like as long as I'm in the program or doing something like positive, I won't have to look at nothing negative. It's a good program, and they they want me to stay in because. They don't want nothing like bad to happen to me or well, end up in dead or in jail somewhere. I like that we come together and I meet new people. Sometimes I don't be scared to like be nervous to express myself to people. It brings me and my family together and it makes us closer and help us understand things that we don't quite understand in life. Like we share stories and stuff with each other. It made me feel safe. My family being in the program is just amazing. Cause I, you know, I talked to my kids, but we couldn't, we didn't sit down how we did at the program. So at the program, it was, we were able to sit down and they were able to tell me like, okay, this shouldn't be this way, or that shouldn't be that way. Or tell me their feelings. As far as like um, their stepdad going to jail or whatever, they were able to go and communicate about that in the program and then after the fact come and tell me how it was affecting them. I started Ferrer Foundation in 2007 because of an experience that happened in my life when my father was put in jail and we were cut off from seeing him and I realized how many children don't have somebody in their life that they can rely on and 
that they um, could talk to. You gotta hold it all in, you gotta be brave, you know? You know, stay strong. When I just walk away, violence affects my life because like every day, like every day people down, like I lost, I lost friends, close friends, family members that I really love. Um, problem that I had in my life is dealing with death. Because when I was two, I lost my daddy because he got shot inside the neck. And then my auntie and my uncle just passed away this year because of cancer. Once I was like, uh, wanted to join the game and I wanted to sell drugs and be like my uh, cousins and stuff. So I, so I thought, thought and looked up at, about it and I was like, that's not the life that I want to choose. That's not the life that my family wanted me to choose. So I started to change, like going to my, uh, by the hand club, going to my at school program called by the hand club. And I was going there and they was teaching me stuff like you should always go to college. College is a, a next step for you and stuff. So, uh, so I, I thank everyone that was in my life to help me to do this, but I want to go to college and be, some, be something in life. People need to stop the violence because it don't make uh, people say and it make people scared to go outside and play and make people scared to go on the porch and check their mail because they might be scared that they're going to get hurt or something. First, you start by um, separating the people you be around and like if you're on drugs, like go to a rehab center. Like you don't get nothing out of gangbang but jail and death. Like, and you, if you, you don't want to go to those two. You don't want to die and you don't want to go to jail. So like, just be you. I'm a good girl. That I'm a good person. I'm, go I'm going to school, I'm doing good. That I was proud to uh, go to Seattle and my first time uh, leaving Chicago and riding the airplane. I'm not disrespectful and I listen to my elders. Do what I need to do so I can be able to pass on to the next grade and be a great role model for my younger siblings. And it starts with their home. So if they're seeing violence in the home, they, it's spilling out into the streets. You know, so, and it's gonna be an ongoing cycle until somebody stands up and stops it. You know, I, I think that there's a whole group of, of children in the zip code that we just read about and we don't realize their, how big their hearts are and how large their dreams are and how much they just want to have a good life.